what's going on everybody so once again i am back with another deck tech and today we're talking about the and least in my opinion quintessential mid-range deck in the game right now this is luke green this is kind of what i think of when i think of mid-range you have a lot of value oriented plays a lot of things that are just trying to you know sort of just go one step above the aggro decks but still be aggressive and put enough pressure on to actually deal with the controlling matchups as well as the more mid-range controlling matchups so pretty sweet deck to be honest uh, you get to play a couple of one drops as in like actual one resource and, and make them somewhat useful because of his action ability so pretty cool we're going to talk about that first let's start off with the leader so we got luke skywalker now he is a pretty sweet leader because he has one of those powerful action abilities in the game, at least in my opinion. Being able to pay one and give a shield token to a heroism unit is really impressive. Uh, at least it's a heroism that you have to play in that phase. What this basically means is that you, at least in some points, play one turn behind in terms of playing out your units, but you get extra value for those units if you want to take advantage of the action. Of course, there's a lot of times where you don't even need to do that. And instead, you could just curve out as you might need to. But we do want to take advantage of that action when we can, because it's really, really powerful. Now, his backside is actually one of the more powerful backsides in the game. He is six costed, but he's a four seven, so respectable body. And on attack, you can give another unit a shield token. Now, this is particularly good when you're able to put up a sentinel in front of Luke. What this allows you to do is potentially use Luke to start trading off with some of their units or just attack their base and then constantly give your, your Sentinel a shield, another shield, another shield, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So that when they're constantly trying to hit down your Obi-Wan or your um, Echo Base Defender, whatever it is, they are just getting brick walled by a bunch of shields. It's really, really impressive how much value you can get out of this guy over the course of time. Lastly, about the leader and base, well, we get to run the most competitive base in Energy Conversion Lab. This is the main reason why we are playing green. Uh, that alongside, of course, well, there's just some very strong green cards that we would like to play. But ECL is one of the best reasons to be playing green. And it's not just about the fact that you can guarantee um, certain actions at certain times, but it's just how much value this ECL actually brings. It allows you to trade up oftentimes with a certain unit or just get in a massive burst amount of damage and ruin your opponent's setups. This is extremely powerful. And one of the reasons why green is so rampant in the game is because of ECL. Very, very strong uh, base. And well, <clears throat> I like any excuse to go ahead and try and play with it. So that's going to be the leader and base. Let's dive into the ground units we got going on. So we're talking about ground units. We have to start off with something that I rarely play in any deck, and that is a very poor body with a good effect on turn one in both Alliance Dispatcher and Bail Organa. I oftentimes talk about how something that has 2-2 two, two worth in stats is pretty bad in this game because of the fact that oftentimes people will just trade in your unit and just get way more value out of that in the long run unless they have something powerful enough to do when they get played so spec four soldier gets played because he can remove sentinel and, and that can be impactful or leia gets played because she can go ahead and exhaust an enemy unit or ready up a resource which could be really nice bail and alliance dispatcher need to get a turn to at least activate their action which is really really quite important in luke this is one of the few places where I like these kinds of one drops because you can give them a shield token on turn one. This forces your opponent to either do one of two things, or I guess one of three things. They could just take down it, right? And just kill it later on. That's totally fine. Or power of the dark side, right? That works. Or they have to hit it multiple times, or they just ignore it and you get the value anyways. But most of the time you could actually get the value out of these one costed units on turn one because of the shield token if you think about it in any normal deck let's say you don't have the initiative they go turn one battlefield marine and you go turn one alliance dispatcher and maybe even go two alliance dispatchers well now you've played two units and you might get one action out of it if you played two units but they also will just kill off both alliance dispatchers over the course of time and 
they're not even going to use the units over it so the shield token really changes the, the the math on this and with alliance dispatch in particular you could actually take advantage of luke's action and play on curve right you can go turn to deploy an admiral akbar maybe kill off one of their units if they try to hit your alliance dispatcher or maybe it's just like a viper probe droid and you get to peel the shield counter on admiral akbar so really sweet there or you could just play like a turn two kanan that's really powerful a turn two kanan is extremely powerful and very difficult to deal with and if you continue on that note let's say you go turn two echo base defender put a shield token on it now your alliance dispatcher is almost certain to live and you can go turn three um steadfast battalion or maybe turn three you know whatever you want to play maybe you, you you go as i said um kanan put a shield token on it and then turn four you play obi-wan like there's some really absurd turns you could go with that bail only one copy of this guy i don't think he synergizes as well but the ability to put a shield token on him and then pass around some experience tokens especially if you go like turn two echo base defender and put a experience token on it now it's a five four or you go uh admiral akbar put an experience token on it it could be really powerful and if this guy lives you just get so much value out of him that i kind of like it in certain matchups which is which is why there's only one copy of him three copies of battlefield marine as our first two costed units this guy is just a really well statted unit um this essentially rounds out as well as some of the space units we have the two drops in the deck or the turn one plays because alliance dispatcher and bail count as a full turn one play we wanted a really nice unit as well and battlefield marine is just a really really good statted unit in fact the best statted unit on turn one then we have three copies of echo base defender just again another stat a nice statted unit that has sentinel so it can really well defend for your alliance dispatchers or potentially your luke itself two copies of admiral akbar because we have the one drops because we have a nice early game curve this can oftentimes just be a removal spell in the earlier portions of the game or it can come down later and the restore one is actually quite nice especially since uh there are a lot of aggro decks in the meta we have two copies of yoda now i've gone back and forth on two or three copies of yoda because we have a little bit of a force package in this deck which we'll get to when we talk about events and upgrades because luke is a force unit but yoda is not a rebel which we have a lot of rebel synergies which we'll get to also a little bit later on and well honestly I just prefer the more impactful units on the board. The real thing that you want Yoda for is to improve the force package, which I don't think is actually necessary in this deck. He's still solid, still 2-4 at 3 with Restore 2. He's particularly good against the more aggro decks because he's a must deal with, right? It basically just um, starts pinging off your creatures and restores your HP for you, which is really, really nice. But in the more mid-rangey slash boba decks, I actually prefer something else. Three copies of Kanan, one of the best reasons to be playing blue. He's got all the tags you want, Force, Rebel, um, even Spectre for when that matters. He does do a lot of healing. He is essentially Restore 1.5 <laughs> in a lot of situations, and a 4-5 body is really, really nice. Three copies of Steadfast Battalion. Um, I mentioned earlier about ECL, and we have a couple units that could be ECL'd out, such as Kanan, such as Yoda, but Steadfast Battalion is one of the biggest swings in the game. Um, this is something that I oftentimes like to wait. For example, you can go ahead and go to turn five, deploy Luke, ECL out a Steadfast Battalion, and give a shield token to Luke. Um, which is really, really cool. So definitely a lot of synergies with Steadfast Battalion and Luke and just getting a lot of damage out. Again, Steadfast Battalion with ECL is one of the main combos of the deck. Uh, following that up, we have three copies of Obi-Wan. Really nice Sentinel, one of the best reasons to be playing blue once again. Uh, six costed, comes down right the same turn as Luke if you wish to have that be done. Force Synergy gives you a lot of options with the Force Package that we're running with the events and upgrades. And if this dies, who cares? Especially if you get Luke down. Getting Luke to experience counters and drawing a card is really powerful as well. It just gives you a really powerful leader to, to leverage. And the synergy with Sentinels and Luke is really, really nice as you could just constantly give them shield tokens. Lastly, to round out our ground units, we have two copies of a Luke Skywalker, or Big Luke, as I like to call it. 6-7, Restore 3, very, very annoying against the, uh, for the aggro slash tempo -y decks. And it's a removal spell when you play it, and oftentimes it will hit for minus 6, minus 6, which is really just quite disgusting. Uh, it is just a powerful, powerful unit to drop um, in the late game. Just a really, really high value play. Onto our space units, we got three copies of Restored Arc 170. This is just to round out our turn one plays with 
uh, Alliance Dispatcher, Bale, and Battlefield Marine. We have a total of seven here. And then we have an additional three that gives us up to 10, which is pretty consistent in order for us to do something on turn one, which we oftentimes do want to do. And this is also just a rebel, which is pretty cool, as well as just being a better Alliance X-Wing, which is really, really nice. It's uh, very good against the aggro matchup as the restore one comes into play quite frequently. Two copies of Wing Leader. Now, I don't go the full, I don't go the full three because there are some times when you have some awkward draws where you go turn one like Battlefield Marine and they trade into your Battlefield Marine and you go turn two like Yoda um, or maybe you have turn two Wing Leader and the only thing you had a target for was Battlefield Marine, etc. So I like to only have the two copies in it because you don't have the 100% Rebel uh, type situation that you got going on with other decks. Things like Obi-Wan, Yoda, Steadfast Battalion all don't work with it, but it is still a really strong card. And if you can put it on something like Alliance Dispatcher or even a Bail Organa, it's still really good because then they are now a 3-4 with shield. And that is annoying to deal with because they can start trading in to some opponent's units and actually live through it. It's also just really good with something like a Kanan or even Luke himself. Three copies of Bright Hope. This is really to shore up the space uh area as the sentinel is really really nice and it can get those shield tokens in fact all of our space units can get those shield tokens and this one can return non-leader ground units which is actually really nice with luke because you can replay it and reacquire a shield for it uh, which is not irrelevant then lastly we have one copy of redemption this is kind of the final nail in the coffin for those more aggro slash tempo -y decks if you are able to get to turn seven or even turn six in some cases uh, because we have some ramp you could just drop this and that's pretty much the end of the game for your opponents because they can't get through space they're just going to trade off with redemption and they can't get through ground because you just healed up to eight which you oftentimes will be healing up to eight add that with Kanan, Restored Arc 170, Yoda, Admiral Akbar, and uh, all the different other healings that we got going on, you're going to be able to get there almost always. So that's going to be the main deck. Let's talk about the, or uh, that's the main deck with the units. Let's talk about the events and upgrades we got going on. So as I mentioned, we have a little bit of a force package going on. We got one copy of It Binds All Things to start us off in the event category. This is really, really nice with Yoda, with Obi-Wan, with Luke, with other Luke, uh, all or with Kanan. If you are, let's say, turn three, ECL out of Kanan, kill their unit, take initiative, turn four, it binds all things, boom, suddenly you've killed two units, you've kept your Kanan around, he's full HP, and now you can start attacking him to heal you up. It's a really powerful turn, but there are a lot of times when it binds all things can be a little bit awkward, so we only have the one copy of him or of it in the deck, three copies of resupply this is just a really nice mid-range card as it helps you accelerate ahead of your opponents especially when you have something like ecl you could play resupply and then ecl something out to regain a, a tempo on the board <clears throat> as you'll just have a higher static unit so that even if they try to ecl something out themselves they oftentimes will not be able to compete with your higher level play uh, assuming they don't have resupply or super lasers of the out of their own Two copies of the forces with me i like this one a lot more than it binds all things in this deck as uh, you really do want to be attacking with a unit especially with something like luke right if you go turn four turn five luke whatever it is with resupply um, and then you play the forces with me followed it up with something like a luke's lightsaber or um you know something of that note you can really really have a broken turn where your luke is suddenly just the most absurd set of unit with shield assuming they didn't you know get immediately um or, or you didn't immediately remove it by killing a unit but you get to put another shield on another unit that you have which is really really nice as well three copies of takedown i think this is just a really nice removal spell it is the best position removal spell in the format in my opinion it, it deals with things like boba fett it deals with things like bosk it also deals with leaders which is something that a lot of other removal spells in the game don't deal with as long as they have five or less remaining hp which does happen as many boba players will try to trade in with units or try to get a removal uh, unit off the battlefield so they can trigger the boba effect two copies of ewing reinforcement this is a really really po uh, powerful payoff for being in more of a mid-range slash resupply type of deck as you can get so many different units remember because we're running one drops you could go something like obi-wan plus bail obi-wan plus alliance dispatcher or you could do something like just get a luke or you could do kanan plus admiral akbar echo base defender echo base defender plus bail organa 
you have so many different combinations of cards because of the one drops in the deck that Ewing reinforcement almost always gets you that seven cost that you're looking for and with many many different options then we go into the upgrade category and we have a couple things again with that force package we have two copies of luke's lightsaber this works both with the leader and the other luke um as both of them as you can see here are luke skywalker they just have different tags associated with them so you could heal up your leader fully which is a really powerful powerful thing to do but i don't like the full three of as if you're not attaching this to luke specifically you can potentially not get as much value out of it and it's not as strong frequently but if you do go ahead and go turn one alliance dispatcher put a shield token on it i have done many games where i have gone okay i'm just gonna put a luke's lightsaber on my alliance dispatcher and get myself a four three with a shield that is perfectly reasonable and so you can do things like that but of course the biggest payoff is you know deploying luke the force is with me attack with something or attack with luke right which is really really powerful and then you can even follow that up with a luke's lightsaber like if they try to say okay i'm not going to win the game if um i have this luke staying on the battlefield or let's say they have like a four powered unit and they're like okay i have a takedown in hand i can just take him down if i do some damage to it well then you play a luke and then it's just game over right because then it turns into a 9 10 with a shield which is just broken <laughs> it's just broken uh it is just really really strong one copy of jedi lightsaber very similar to luke's lightsaber with the exception of it's just good on any force unit uh in general because it's just going to give you a lot of really high value trades this is particularly good on yoda as uh you could oftentimes go uh if you go alliance dispatcher turn one you could go turn to yoda shield token into jedi lightsaber which is really really powerful on a you know five seven yoda with a shield token uh it could really swing the game lastly we have two copies of traitorous this is just really good as a removal spell um as well as just a very nice tempo play you can steal bobas you can steal um battlefield marines you can steal their own yodas you can steal so many different things with traitorous it is just a very very powerful uh card to be playing in any green deck and that's going to round out the main deck as this is just a really sweet list but let's get in let's get into the sideboard now since this is a mid-range deck i have a lot of play sets or, or rather lack of play sets in the main deck you know a lot of two ofs um, and even some one ofs because we are going into the mid to late game with a lot of different decks we want a variety of different options for us and so the sideboard kind of just seals the deal on a lot of two ofs or one ofs in the deck and gives us an extra copy or the final copy to shore up whatever matchup we have and so for example we have one copy of akbar one copy of luke one copy of redemption one copy of ewing one copy of traitorous all of finish the play sets of the main deck with the exception of redemption which gives us a second copy admiral akbar particularly comes in in the more tempo oriented slash aggro matchups where you can come down deal damage to a unit and even if it doesn't kill it this potentially gives you a nice little bit of a swing where admiral akbar is going to stay alive and give you some hp luke comes in where you really want him in the boba matchup where he can kill something as almost always something is going to be defeated because boba wants to get stuff removed and this just oftentimes will kill boba himself or just anything on the battlefield redemption comes in against boba against the aggro decks because you can actually reach the seven mana that is required to play it at least i found with uh, the cards that we currently have in deck one copy of ewing really good against the more mid-rangey control matchups traitorous again good against boba good against aggro good against um, basically anything that has any sort of early game plays three copies of consortium star viper this is something that we don't have main deck because it is not a heroism car which means we cannot synergize with the rebel tag or the, the the kind of action tag that we have on luke but this is very very good against the specific heavy aggro sabine matchup that you'll find or leia matchup that you'll find where it's a 3-3 so it trades into a wings it trades into x wings it trades into red threes profitably while also giving you the potential to restore two two copies of mercenary company this is the last edition of the sideboard and i was trying to figure out what we want to add it's not a heroism unit but i found that this is really really good as something to deal with a lot of the creatures that boba has uh this is something that i've really really enjoyed as one thing with boba that you really don't want to have is the forced play where you're playing a unit with the intention to trade with them 
and you can't trade with them immediately. And I was looking at some of the other options like the Snow Speeder or the Rogue Squadron Skirmisher. Those are like three or four power. The fifth point of power is extremely important because you want to kill Boba Fett. You want to kill Bosk. You want to kill these five toughest units. And if you don't, you basically remove the reason why we're playing these units. And so Mercenary comes, uh, Company comes in as a way to just kill off something like a boss that comes down the turn before. And that way you can actually return um, kind of tempo back into your advantage. Really, really powerful against those. It's also just good in a lot of scenarios against some of the more aggro decks. Because remember, if you're resupplying, you could play this on potentially turn four where they're playing, I don't know, uh, their own Steadfast Battalion or potentially a um zeb or whatever five drop they have or maybe they go general dodonna into like rebel assault well now you screw that up a little bit by killing off their general dodonna and keeping your five toughness unit on the battlefield it could be very very strong and i've uh even though it's counterintuitive right not a heroism card even though you have some heroism ambush you really want that fifth point of power especially to trade into a lot of those units so that's gonna be the sideboard overall uh i've had some questions about you know where we're sideboarding and what we're taking out uh again if you're looking to kind of shore up the main deck some things that i would consider taking out in the aggro matchup is some things like the lightsabers these are a lot more high value plays for the later game where you have to attack and get some more value out of it you just don't need this you already are going bigger when you get to that point in the game where you can start equipping lightsabers um so i would oftentimes remove all three of these or maybe keep one luke's lightsaber in uh things like you know steadfast battalion are oftentimes just not necessary against aggro you could even take those out and then bring in as i mentioned admiral akbar the traitorous um the consortium star vipers against the more boba oriented matchups things like uh the upgrades can be a little bit awkward um i do like to keep the luke's lightsaber in traitorous is very very good so i do like to keep that in again you could steal their boba and even if they're bouncing it back to your hand they are a more tempo deck so if you could just stall a little bit longer then you can oftentimes outpace them um things like the forces with me is also very very good things that are not very very good uh, are things like yoda i've found to be pretty mediocre or things like wing leader is very very poor against boba oftentimes as for the mercenary company again that you really want to come in and uh something like well you can even take out Bail Organa as he is really poor against waylays and things like that, or, or just ways that they're going to deal with your units. And even in some cases, you could potentially take out, uh, even though they're bouncing your units and exhausting your units, something like Admiral Akbar, because your units are oftentimes not going to steal in the battlefield. So his when played effect is not going to be as valuable, but it really depends on kind of what version of Boba they're running. So just some ideas for sideboarding as uh, I've had a lot of questions about that. Of course, it really depends on what specific deck they're fi you're fighting, what copies of cards they have in there, what variation of deck they're running and all that type of stuff. So it's very matchup dependent and even more so uh, card dependent, depending on, again, all the dependencies. I said dependent, I think eight or nine times there, because that's all that matters is what are they doing over there? <laughs> that is the whole point of sideboarding. Um, so hopefully that gave you some ideas. Let me know what you think about the deck in the comment section down below. Luke is a fan favorite. Um, I think this card is sweet. It's one of the first ones that I played with. In fact, this is the first deck that I played with the starter deck I played it back when TwitchCon um what was happening and there was kind of like a early access almost like alpha slash beta that was the first time I played Luke and Paper and had the R2 C3PO combo which is pretty sweet but also just not as good as it is a very slow thing to do but regardless Luke has always had a little bit of a soft spot in my heart and I love the mid-rangey decks I love the more controlling decks even though I'm a sucker for you know Rebel Assault Leia I do typically enjoy the more longer pace more controlling more answers type of deck that you can kind of really outplay your opponent uh, with what you got so hopefully you all enjoyed let me know what you think and i'll see you all for the next one